From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, welcome to another episode of Ropecast. This is Peter Tischer. I'm back here in the studio with Sarah Jerram, who is both an English teacher at our university and a mother of a two-year-old child. Yes, that's right. Goes by the name of Matthew. Yes. Okay. And you moved here one year ago to Germany with your husband and your son. Mm -hmm. And I would like to ask you whether you know what a Rabenmutter is. Oh. A raven's mother. That's a German term. <laughs> you know what that is? Um, actually, I do. I have a, a little idea of what it is. That's a m <laughs> mother who doesn't take really take care of yes. her children. I have. And since that. you are <laughs> working full time. <laughs> Um, could you, have you ever been called that, a Ravenmutter? Well, not to my face. <laughs> not to your face. No. Um, have you sensed that people could consider you that? Um, I don't think so, because Matthew's very much part of my life. Um, mm -hmm. He's always mentioned in all my classes. The students mm -hmm. know him. He even came into one of my classes once. Mm -hmm. he, he often comes to the university. Uh, it's like his second playground. Okay. And um, I try and spend as much time. So when I'm at home, that's time uh, to be with him. Okay. And I... So you've ne was... never had to justify yourself no. here? I'm glad to hear that. However... <laughs> German sociologists and German journalists tend to say that this is one of the reasons why Germany has such a low birth rate. We have a birth rate of 1.3 per couple, whereas Great Britain or uh, United Kingdom has roughly around two, so that's almost the complete reproductive rate, mm -hmm. so you will not be extinct anytime <laughs> soon, the British. So you wouldn't say it's it's due to that? that uh... Well, I've certainly noticed that it's much less common. Um, I think one of the things as well is the, the fact that um, the school day is different as well. Uh -huh. So that even when children go to school, um, they finish much earlier than British children do. When do children, British children stop usually school? It's usually somewhere between three and four. Ah, okay. Because they usually have their lunch at school. There is... So they can so have can, their main meal at, at school. So you can almost hold a full-time position. Yeah. And there's lots and lots of after-school clubs. It's it's very common. There's there's also breakfast clubs as well. Are those private? Sometimes they are, but but very often the school runs them themselves. Okay. And are they expensive? Again, it, it all depends. Sometimes they they can be, but sometimes it's part of the school's sort of social ethos, if you like. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, the reason why I'm asking is that another reason that a lot of uh, people bring forth to explain why Germans have such a low birth rate is child benefits. So any money you get from the state, any, any financial support that we can have if you have children is supposedly apparently not enough for the Germans who <laughs> uh, tend to seek uh, a lot of financial security uh, okay. in any walk of life. Uh, could you explain how is it in Britain? Do they get any? Do you get anything when you have children? Well, I'm surprised at that comment because the um, the German child benefits, so what's called Kindergeld here, mm -hmm. is much much higher than in Britain. Mm -hmm. um, it's 184 euros um, a month, okay. and as far as I know, it also goes up when you have more children. I think when you have three or more, yes. then it goes up yeah. for the third, fourth child exactly. you go up. Mm -hmm. Well, that's completely the opposite in Britain. Mm -hmm. um, in Britain, um, the eldest child, or the first child, gets £20.30 a week. Mm -hmm. so, so it's about £80 euros? Pounds, um, a month. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then it goes down um, for subsequent children. So it's £13.40 a week for other children. Uh -huh. And um, with the uh, austerity measures that our uh -huh. new coalition government has introduced, uh -huh. um, it's been frozen for three years, the oh my God. child benefit. And it's also, the, the other interesting thing is that I was absolutely astonished um, when some of my students told me that they still, um, their parents still receive kindergarten on their behalf, even though they're in their 20s. Mm -hmm. And for us, um, child benefit finishes at the child's 16th birthday. 
unless they're going on to to some sort of practical training. So it, w it would mm. continue, for example, for um, children still doing so at school and doing A levels. Okay. But um, I think the absolute maximum is twenty, but not if they're at university. So it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's not paid if they've gone to university. So money can't be the issue here if we, if we compare Great Britain to Germany. Definitely not. Do you have any idea at all why Germans do not want to have as many babies as your country, men and women? I have I've no idea. I've only noticed that um, if you talk to students, for example, very often they don't seem to be too keen on the idea of having a family, which is... A, Seems a little bit sad to me. Yeah, uh, to me too. I mean, I have two children. Mm -hmm. um, is that different in a in a German in a, in a British university? You think that you know when you studied was that much more of an issue with your fellow students to have a family? I think that is much more accepted and has been for a much longer time that um, that people can both work and have a family, and mm -hmm. there's more acceptance of a having a a good work-life balance and mm -hmm. that work isn't the be-all and the end-all um, of everything. Oh. Maybe that's the problem <laughs> we Germans have, uh, <laughs> that we sort of tend to put work over everything. And, mm -hmm. of course, uh, the work-life balance mm -hmm. is an issue, and I think, for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah, thanks for giving Thank us you. this information about the, the British system. Mm -hmm. And I'd be glad to have you back here in the studio sometime. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, goodbye, listeners. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.